Hello everyone, my name is Devendra Singh Dhami and I'll be talking about our work on knowledge intensive learning of generative adversarial networks or GANs. This is a joint work in collaboration with Mayuk Das from Samsung Research Institute India and my advisor Shriyam Natarajan from UT Dallas. This is our problem statement. Given a real world medical data set, we want to generate a synthetic version of the data, which is as close to the real data as possible in terms of the underlying distribution. We also have expert advice, that is domain knowledge at hand, and the aim is to guide the data generation process using this expert advice to achieve our goal. We use generative adversarial networks as the underlying generative model due to its recent success in generating image data which has been the focus of various GAN architectures and they have seldomly been applied to other types of data. This is a major limitation of the generative adversarial network models that we want to address through this work. Another limitation is that the injection of expert domain knowledge into GANs has not been addressed in previous work. And as far as we are aware, this is the first work on using expert advice to guide GANs towards generating better quality synthetic medical data which is faithful to the real data. There has been some work on applying GANs for medical data generation, such as the work of Choi et al. in 17, or Pauli et al. in 19, 2019. But as, as we said, this is still in early stages. The question arises, why do we need to generate medical data sets? There are several motivations, out of which I discuss the three which according to us are the most important and the most relevant motivations. First, obtaining real medical data sets for machine learning research is monetarily very, very expensive. Most of these data sets come with a heavy price tag and thus it is not possible for every machine learning researcher to obtain. Second are privacy issues. We do not want to divulge any details about the patients that are included in the real medical data set. Otherwise, we might be liable for lawsuits. And thus, real medical data sharing is rare. Third are access issues. As a machine learning researcher, even though the data is free, we need to go through a lot of trainings and certifications which need to be completed before obtaining the data, which is time consuming and limits access. All of these said issues prevent free data sharing and severely limits the use of machine learning techniques on real world medical data sets. We now present our proposed architecture, which we call Human Allied Generative Adversarial Networks, or HA GANs for short. We initially trained the underlying GAN architecture for a specified n number of iterations. The underlying GAN architecture that we consider are the Vesetines GANs or W GANs. Uh, we use them because they are shown to be robust to mode collapse. So we initially have a generator and a discriminator. The generator takes a random noise and generates some data. That generated data is passed to the discriminator along with the real data, which discriminates between the real and the generated data and passes the feedback back to the generator. So this happens for n iterations. After n iterations, we apply the expert advice to the generated data, which is G1 in the figure. The type of advice used is correlation advice, where we either increase or decrease the correlations between the generated features and generate a new data set, which faithfully captures the expert advice. Uh, we then pass the newly generated data, which is G1 bar in the figure, to the discriminator, and this process is repeated every n iterations. Now, there might be a question regarding the choice of advice. Why do we use only correlation advice? Why not some other kind of advice? Real world medical data sets have some hidden relationships and capturing those relationships becomes of paramount importance if you want to faithfully generate synthetic medical data sets. And correlations are the most natural way to capture those hidden relationships. And thus you want to guide the generator to capture such kind of correlations. So we ask the expert for correlation advice. We generate data that is faithful to advice. And then we pass the generated data to the GAN architecture as I've already mentioned before. To do this, we use constraint on feature correlations. We want to either increase or decrease the correlation between the features. For positively correlated features, we want to increase the correlation. So we multiply the correlation values by one divided by 
the maximum of the mod of the correlation matrix value. Since the correlation matrix value lies between minus one and one, the mod lies between zero and one. And thus one divided by the maximum value will increase the value of the correlation. And similarly for negatively correlated features, you want to decrease the correlation and then you multiply by the max of the mod of the values of the correlation matrix. In this way, we obtain the modified correlation matrix. I'll show you an example next. For example, C is our initial correlation matrix and A is our advice matrix. This is an example of applying the given advice to the correlations of obtained generated data. Lambda here is the factor by which the correlation value is to be augmented and is given as either max of the mod of the correlation value or one divided by the maximum correlation value as I've already explained in the previous slide. So the first advice is correlation value between feature one and feature two is high. And so we multiply the value by one divided by the max value, which is 0.3. And thus we increase the value from 0.2 to 0.667. And the second advice is the correlation between feature one and feature three is low. So we directly multiply one by uh, one and 0.3 by 0.3 to obtain one and 0.09 as shown in the figure. Now I describe the Eman Conover method, which is the backbone of a method uh, to include human expert advice into the GAN architecture. So the first step is to create a random matrix M with some values which follow the Gaussian distribution. We obtain this by using something called inverse transform sampling. For more details, you can look at the paper. The second is to calculate the correlation matrix of the random matrix that we have obtained. And the third step is to calculate the Cholesky decomposition of the correlation matrix. Cholesky decomposition of a positive definite matrix is given as the product of a lower triangular matrix and its conjugate transpose. Then Cholesky decomposition of the obtained correlation matrix of the obtained correlation matrix after advice that is obtained. And then we calculate a reference matrix, which is ranking of the generated data. Then we rearrange that generated data columns to have same ordering as the uh, reference matrix. So the basic idea here is you obtain some random values from the Gaussian distribution and then we rearrange those values so that they follow the required correlation matrix. And uh, in the paper, we also show how Cholesky decomposition captures the correlation. So please refer to the paper for more uh, details. We show some example correlation advice or constraints that we use while training the GAN. For example, a preference might be that the correlation between cholesterol level and blood pressure is high. Another preference might be that the correlation between cholesterol level and income level is low, and so on. We test our method on two real world medical data sets. First is nephrotic syndrome, which is a novel data set of symptoms indicating kidney damage and consists of clinical data for 50 patients and has 19 features. The second data set is the MIMIC data set, which is, a publicly, which is publicly available and consists of de-identified information of patients in a critical care hospital. It consists of 46,520 patients and has 18 features. We use the train on synthetic tests on real method to measure the quality of the generated synthetic data. As the results show, using our method with good advice, which is HA GAN GA in the table, it generates better, we generate better quality synthetic data than the baselines considered and a method with the bad advice, which is HA GAN BA in the table. These figures show the obtained correlation matrix for real data sets, as well as the generated data with and without advice for both gen nephrotic syndrome and mimic data. So the generated data without advice is the vanilla vesetine GAN and generated data with advice is R method. If we examine these figures, if these correlation matrices carefully, we see that uh, our method is able to capture the correlations between features more faithfully, thereby proving the superiority of our approach over the baselines. Thank you very much. This was my presentation and do let me know if you have any other questions.